Hi, I am Nimrod from QSpark. Uh, today I want to talk about some of the lessons I learned in the past three years working in an environment in which every microsecond actually counts. So, uh, what makes high frequency trading environment unique? So, in those low latency environments, performance is truly a key feature. Since every transaction is a race, and in many times the second place simply gets nothing. This forces the real-time flow to be extremely optimized in every way possible. There's no notion of fast enough. If I can improve the real-time flow in even a fraction of a microsecond, it is worth the effort. Uh, I'm going to show a few ground rules I learned during my work in this environment. So the first basic and simple rule is it is not faster if it was measured. This sounds obvious, it was told many times during those presentations, but we tend to make a lot of assumptions and rule of thumb uh, that under closing inspection may proven to be some, somewhat false. For example, from our environment, we're using a very efficient object allocator over pre-allocated uh, memory space, and we always assumed it would be much more efficient than malloc but some measurements show that malloc is sometimes more efficient. Uh, that was because our implementation was not optimized to reuse hot memory segments from the pool. When we changed that, the issue was resolved and the performance boost was very noticeable. Uh, to get those kind of me measurements, we create a performance graph that looks like this. Let's take a closer look. So you can see, I hope you can see, that the graph gives the real-time cost of every action in the system, which gives us a performance baseline that we can use to compare different environments, different configuration, different version. Of course, creating such a graph has an overhead by itself, so, so we can't always use this kind of measurements in actual production environments. Uh, the second rule I want to give is branching is sometimes more expensive than you think. Uh, we, of course, tend to rely a lot about on branch prediction, but branching this prediction is still a real performance issue for us. So we are always trying to minimize the branching in our code. The most obvious way and common way of doing that is to move as many decisions as possible to the compilation and initialization time. Modern C++ provides tons of techniques of doing that, and I'm sure you heard about them during this convention. I want to look at another method, a design in which we sacrifice some of the safety checks in sake of performance, allowing us to receive a more deterministic, although a risky flow. So this is your standard error handling flow. In, in, in that flow, the code contains a lot of safety checks. We translate into a lot of branching and sometimes some uh, branching misprediction. The logic here is simple. You understand the benefit. If we have an issue, we try and discover it as soon as possible and handle it as soon as possible in a safe and graceful way. But sometimes we strive to a different design uh, in which we assume that our input is just okay and everything good and safe until we actually have to use it. When we do, we either succeed and everything is great or we pay the price. The price can range from many things, uh, expensive exception to data corruption or even segmentation faults. Uh, all are very expensive to handle and to debug and stabilizing this kind of environments tends to be much harder and very expensive, but when, we, when it does become stable, we get a more predictable pipeline of events uh, that allows to eliminate a lot of the redundant branching. Uh, this is, of course, very dangerous design, but sometimes the insurance fee is too high and you have to wa waiver it. it. Uh, the last rule I want to give you is to watch for the rare yet critical flow. Let's look at this code. Uh, it checks repeatedly if, if hell is frozen. If hell hasn't frozen yet, it updates some counters. Otherwise, it buy oil stocks. Of course, the most critical action here is to buy oil stocks when hell freezes over. But says hell rarely freezes over once, maybe twice a day. All the runtime optimization, branch prediction, CPU cache will all work to work optimizing the more likely case in which we only update counters. 
Uh, fooling those mechanisms without triggering unwanted flows is quite complicated, and I can get into it in this small presentation, but at least try and map those flows and their impact on your latency. Thanks. You can find me. All right, thank you.